Alright, let's go Terry. Hello and welcome back to the ocean. It is great to see you here. In this video, I'm going to share tips and advice that you can use to catch more fish. With a pole spear specifically, however, many of these techniques can be applied to spearfishing in general. Fish identification is a key skill in spearfishing. I saw a brown and white striped fish, what is that? How big was it? Oh, maybe a Perori. There's a few of those around as well. A good rule of thumb when it comes to spearfishing is if you don't know what it is, don't shoot it. So there's a Perori, that'd be a good one for you to shoot. Understanding your prey and how it acts is absolutely critical in coming up with a good hunting strategy. To be able to reliably target any one fish takes a huge amount of knowledge. You can't swim towards them, you just gotta let them swim to you. Because if you got down to the bottom there and just waited, they would have come in. In this dive, I'm taking a drop to get close to the Perori with no intention of taking a shot on them. In this dive, I'm employing what I believe to be the most effective hunting technique here in the Coromandel. Getting right down to the bottom, dusting up, making a little bit of noise, acting disinterested and making the fish come in towards you. You're going to get much better shots that way. The school of Perori came in for a quick look before moving off again. I put my head down, give it a few more grunts, act disinterested and what do you know when I look up, the school is coming straight back towards me. You can't act too keen swimming towards the fish. My dive buddy this day was Cade. Pay attention to how high is hanging off the bottom. Those large movements and aggressive body language. The fish can read and pick up on all of that and as a result aren't very interested in hanging around. Sometimes less is more. If you spend a lot of time thrashing about, you're dramatically reducing your odds of catching good fish. He's a very new diver, however, he has made exceptional progress. So you're moving way too much on the bottom, bro, you're just gonna wait for them. Use that arm to pull you along the rocks as opposed to like doing big swimming movements. This next dive from Cade was much better. He was able to take on board a lot of the advice I gave him. He's sitting here behind a rock really still really calm and really approachable we're not seeing any more of that aggressive body language from him yo great dive dude that was perfect we'll head out of the bit deeper from the surface i spot a school of kingfish my goal today is to land one on the pole spear i'm going to be employing the same technique that i used to get close to the prairie earlier on in the video as opposed to swimming towards the kingfish as much as i would like to i'm going to drop straight down to the bottom act disinterested find some cover and make a bit of noise to hopefully try and bring those kingfish in. If I swim towards them, I'm not going to get a shot that I'm looking for. To get good shots and get close to good fish, you have to make the fish come towards you. It's the only way. Just as I knew they were going to, the kingfish came in hot. At this range with a spear gun, it would have been no challenge. However, with the pole spear, I didn't want to go for it. These kingfish moved on. <laughs> However, I believe I encountered some of these same ones throughout the day. Because I wasn't initially aggressive, they hung around later on. Yo, yeah, okay, we'll head out a little bit deeper. To shoot a fish, one must first find a fish. This often involves a lot of swimming, working out currents, working out tides, and return to the same spot multiple times to work out when it is most optimal to be diving. However, some things hold true. Fish like to hang around structure as well as other fish. If you find small fish, the big fish usually aren't too far away. Most of the fish that we target as spear fishermen hang out in and around structure. The first point of reference that I look for, rocks, kelp, seaweed, things that fish can hang out and live around. I brought this kinna up to the surface to use to try and burly in some snap. However, it was so fat I couldn't help myself. Kinna are truly a delicacy. I saw this might be like one of the best kinnas you have. Using a hand powered pole spear is significantly harder than using a trigger mechanism based spear gun because you have to hold all the forces in your hand before releasing it into a fish. With a trigger mechanism it allows the gun to take all of the load. When picking a pole spear it is important to find something that you can comfortably use. Something that's not going to strain you out. If you do a lot of hunting you're going to be spending a lot of time holding that spear at tension. If you want to find something that you can do comfortably without actually injuring yourself. Goatfish are a good species to target on the pole spear as they're relatively easy, very tasty. You're most often going to find goatfish hanging out in schools on the sand just off the weed line.
There's quite a few goldfish down here, you can try a spare one. They hang out right on the bottom. I'll take a dive one here just so you can see what they look like. Dive bombing or swimming and dropping directly down on the fish is a very, very simple technique. However, doing it effectively can often take a bit of strategizing. The fish must be approached from directly above. You need to keep yourself very streamlined to minimize your profile. You don't want to go too slowly, giving the fish enough time to realize what's happening. However, if you go too fast, you definitely risk spooking the fish and causing it to swim off. Keeping the sun behind you is going to make things easier and make it harder for the fish to make out what you actually are. This strategy is worth practicing as there are many fish which are actually easier to shoot using this technique than getting straight down to the bottom. I think a great example of this is boarfish. My favourite way to eat goatfish is whole, so here I'm scaling it. Scaling them is very easy as the scales are extremely large and come off without too much struggle. These next couple clips are Cade employing the dive bomb technique, however, with limited success. The biggest problem I saw is he's getting down too far, as opposed to staying on top of the fish and keeping that good angle, that good line of sight where they can't really see you too much. He's unfortunately making it too close to the bottom, where he's then flattening out and the fish can get a good view of him. At which point, they often decide they don't want to stick around. Here we have Cade taking a few shots, however, unfortunately missing with all of them. On my way back to the surface, I start absolutely cracking up which you can see all the bubbles coming out from i thought that was really funny <laughs> what a crack up man Cade has a really good or bad track record when it comes to shark. Hence the nickname Shark Mag. The only two dives he hasn't actually seen shark were his first dive ever and the one in Taupa where there are no shark. We managed to come across this little one. The speed of a shark is absolutely amazing. Look how fast it's able to accelerate. Just a few flicks of the tails and it's off and out of there. If one of these wanted to sneak up on you, there's really like nothing you could do. Breathing up on the surface, I spot a kingfish and the kingfish seems very interested in my flopper. I make a drop down towards the bottom. Halfway there, I decide to sort of abort my plan and turn my attention towards the kingfish, not something I typically do. I'm a strong advocate for getting to the bottom. However, it's not always necessary. Moving the flopper, I manage to bring the fish in close enough to take a shot, but I don't take it. It's not a shot that I'm 100% certain on. I didn't want to ruin my opportunity if it wasn't going to be a good shot. I'm waiting here, tracking the fish, hoping it'll give me another opportunity, but it starts moving away. At this point, I think I've totally screwed it up. I start moving the flopper again, the last such attempt to bring that kingfish back. Even using the squid hand technique, first time ever, and it actually worked out. And I'd make a shot, hitting it really, really well. This fish is hurt bad. However, kingfish always put up a great fight. This is one of the primary reasons why I love shooting kingfish. Getting this fish to the surface was relatively easy, however it's still got a lot of go in it. Shooting a kingfish is a great way to have sharks come in, so it's always in your best interest to try and close out the fight as quickly as possible. However, oftentimes you can try pulling the kingfish when they're a bit too green, such as this case. I was able to get a hand to them, but not able to secure the fish. At this point I take a moment to sort out line management and wait for Cade to be able to help me out with a backup shot. Here he hits the fish, doesn't go very deep, however he pushes it in, securing it. At this point I'm able to get the fish into my hands, brain it, bleed it, and that's a wrap. Kingfish on the pole spear. Ever since starting out my journey with pole spears almost a year ago, this has been the dream. The goal fish for that entire time has been this. And to achieve it, I was absolutely stoked, over the moon, couldn't really be much happier to be honest. Thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you enjoy.